good morning everyone my topic today is, is that you are presenting on behalf of medicine 3 presenting to you 31 year old female uh, coolie from godpadi presented with complaints of fever and headache for four days and vomiting for one day she was well before four days after that she developed fever which was high grade intermittent associated with chills and rigor and relieved on taking paracetamol and she complained of headache for four days predominantly over frontal region and which was persistent not relieved on taking analgesics and the intensity was severe that she couldn't be able to lie down also and vomiting for one day one episode which was non bilious and non bloody there were no history of seizure or limb or facial weakness or altered sensorium no other positive history suggestive of other focus of infection baseline she was ambulant was doing daily routine household activities past history she was diagnosed to have tb meningitis in september 2011 at that time csf was done showed glucose of 7 and protein of 4.5 g total counts of 95 with lymphocytic predominance of 99 she was started on att and steroids csf there were no micro microbiological evidence was detected ng2 was negative and expert was not done and sputum was negative she didn't take steroids and she presented after one month with worsening headache and ct showed obstructive hydrocephalus for which she underwent emergency vp shunt was done so later days she she was hospitalized once for combined plasmodium vivax and dengue infection personal history her obstructive core was score was p3 l2 and uh, she had one iud at 7 month of gestation uh, it was documented like congenital malformation in the fetus normal vaginal delivery and she had history of copper t insertion following her delivery one year ago so examination uh, she had tachycardia of 106 pulse rate and bp was normal respiratory rate 22 and the rest of the general physical examination were normal and other system examination were normal coming to cns cranial nerves there were no obvious deficits noted bilateral pupils were equal and reactive to light reflexes bilateral knee knee jerk was 3 plus whereas plantas were flexa meningeal signs terminal neck stiffness were present gait was not assessed but fundus didn't show any papillary edema so the diagnosis patient presenting with fever headache and vomiting with examination showed classical terminal neck stiffness so straight forward diagnosis of acute meningitis was considered so the differentials which we considered in the ed were acute meningitis with probable shun block because she had earlier uh, vp shun with obstructive hydrocephalus in view of worsening headache and uh, which was not not relieving so uh, most likely etiology considered here was bacterial because of this such a short duration and uh, later tubercular viral fungal and parasitic were in the down the list so in the ed emergency ct brain was done which showed pan ventricular mild hydrocephalus uh, right parietal shunt with tip near septum pellucidum and csf density along bilateral uh, tentorial leaflets in just a incidental finding on the right side chronic subdural hematoma this hydrocephalus was there so uh initial investigation showed total counts of 8600 with neutrophil of 70 platelets 194 rft lft were normal bbs was negative uh this we didn't send from ed uh, the acute febrile or cup were sent so we did csf csf showed total counts of 54 with volume of of 83 uh and bacteria was present so uh, csf biochemistry revealed glucose of 5 with concurrent grbs of 123 and protein of 97 so uh, the management was considered management we, which we started was uh, we have started the patient on ceftriaxone and vancomycin in the ed and the patient shifted to ward and we have obtained neurosurgery consul from the ed regarding emergency extraction of shunt and which was subsequently done once the patient has, after the patient has reached ward so we asked neurosurgery uh, opinion regarding complete removal of shunt in view of acute meningitis with probable uh, the shunt being the source shunt was considered as the source so they have opined like uh, they will not remove the cranial end of the shunt tube because if we try on attempt of removal of the tube since the shunt shunt been placed for a, such a long duration we will have more complication rather being benefit 
it will cause torrential hemorrhage and uh, will not be removed this what uh, the consult tool and uh, we uh, we can remove the abdominal end of the shunt by two options either we can straight away remove the remove uh, exteriorize the shunt uh, to relieve the blockade and we can continue for 14 days of antibiotics and post we can do revision surgery or we can wait and we put the patient on antibiotics for 14 days then we can do shunt revision in both the, both the techniques the cranial end will not be removed so uh, it's a case of acute meningitis then why we have presented to clinical meeting because uh, when we did uh, csf gram stain which showed bacteria and surprisingly it was gram negative bacteremia concurrent blood culture also showed uh, enterococcus pcm and the csf gram stain showed both e coli and enterococcus so it was considered to be shunt related polymicrobial infection the source of infection for vp shunt was unclear there were no clear abdominal source because clinically abdomen was soft and there were no features of peritonitis no guarding no rigidity and usg abdomen which we have done showed no obvious collection so pid was considered as another possibility for this gram negative septicemia and gram negative cns infection and since the patient had copper t in situ we considered whether that cause pid something and uh, the probability of uh, getting cns infection with uh, shunt in situ uh, probable gut translocation causing e coli and enterococcus bacteremia which was considered so the definitive management for this our uh, patient is replacement of the shunt which can be planned after repeat csf cultures once the csf cultures become negative and appropriate antibiotic coverage initially we have started the patient on ceftriaxone and vancomycin since the uh, uh, culture has grown both enterococcus and uh, e coli we have changed into meropenem because it was resistant and uh, copper t has been removed so uh, we have sent repeat csf culture after 3 days and that has shown no bacteria kind of clearance so presenting to you gram negative bacterial infection in patients with vp shunt Uh, we have went up to literature review uh, what are the challenges which we are facing because in our in our ward we are encountering lot of patients with vp shunt in situ but presenting with other complication like pneumonia or aspiration pneumonia or something else but what if somebody with vp shunt presents with gram negative bacteremia gram negative uh, vp shunt infection how to proceed further how to approach so introduction this gram negative vp shunt infection as was clinical outcome um, systematic search of pubmed medline and google uh, scholar databases from 1970 we went up uh, literature review and the incidence varies from 1 to 30% and up to 35% of the infected shunts had gram negative bacteria as a pathogen uh, one more study uh, regarding incidence and risk factors of vp shunt infections in children Uh, in this study uh, 333 patients uh, out 333 patients of who had shunt and 35 are shown shunt related infection among that four are shown gram negative bacteremia with the incidence of 1.2% so what are all the risk factors for vp shunt infection uh, so uh, earlier day uh, earlier days after the shunt in uh, shunt insertion within one month I had high chance of infection, uh, and uh, regarding expertise of the neurosurgeon regarding how uh, aseptic the procedures being done, and the post-operative CSF leak, and the use of neuroendoscope for this uh, shun blockage. So uh, another study, 20-year longitudinal study, showed the infection rate at six months was five percent, five point six percent, and increased to six point four, eight, and nine, and ten percent in five, ten, twenty years subsequently since the shunt surgery been done so uh, if the patient having shunt infection with probable shunt blockade shunt infection causing shunt blockade with acute meningitis kind of uh, meningitis kind of picture patient can present uh, with a varied presentation like non specific symptoms of fever and abdominal pain or some redness guarding rigidity in the abdomen like kind of picture of localized peritonitis or uh, patient can present features of full blown meningitis like neck stiffness uh, neurological deterioration headache and nausea 
so this kind of presentation uh, since our patient presented like this uh, uh, was seen in less than 50% of cases of shunt infection so what is the diagnostic criteria as per uh, cdc so patient should have meningitis or ventriculitis patient who were uh, having meningitis or ventriculitis must meet the at least one of the following criteria uh, isolation identification of pathogenic microorganism from the csf or the patient should have at least one of the following either fever or headache or meningeal signs or cranial nerve signs and at least one of the following criteria they should fulfill one of the following of four below criteria low cs of glucose with elevated white cells and increased protein or gram stain showing suspected organism or organism can be isolated from the blood concurrent uh, blood culture showed organism or fourfold increase in the pad sear of the organism or a diagnostic single igm antibody titer so uh, gnb associated when uh, vp shunt infection and the most common was found to be uh, e coli uh followed by citrotobacter and enterobacter species seracea species and pseudomonas aeruginosa so the antibiotics preferred anti antimicrobial therapies for targeted treatment would be sus susceptible gram negative bacilli we can straight away start the patient uh, as ceftriaxone pseudomonas species pseudomonas specific antibiotics like ceftriaxone or meropenem we can consider alternative therapy like fluoroquinolone also we can consider and studies have shown that even ciprofloxacin if the patient sensitive to ciprofloxacin we can come down downgrade the antibiotics as early as possible if it is esbl or acinetobacter and the antibiotic of choice should be meropenem so what are the other treatments for vp shunt infection so removal of the infected shunt results in rapid clearance of infection uh, as certain microorganism have the potential to adhere from biofilm so like organisms of uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa similarly uh, once infected removal of all components of the infected internal uh, ventricular catheters along with targeted antimicrobial therapy results in treatment success in up to 85% of patients but we cannot do because since i have already explained the cranial end of the shunt will not be removed at any cost so in case of clinical necessity monitoring of csf findings culture and treatment of hydrocephalus uh, there is one more treatment option for uh, this hydrocephalus we can do uh, temporary external ventricular drain despite being the uh, vp shunt in situ for this vp shunt we will give antibiotics for couple of for two weeks duration uh, we will document csf clearance and subsequently we can remove uh this shunt this lower part of shunt meanwhile for the hydrocephalus we can do temporary external ventricular drain as option so regarding uh, daily dose and the antibiotics uh meropenem we can choose 120 mg per kg and uh, the dosing interval should be 8 hours for infants and children and adults uh, 6 g 2 g iv q 8 early which we are giving uh so how long do we need to give the antibiotics so the duration of therapy depends upon the pathogenesis host factors and the clinical response to the therapy so there are uh, there is something like rule of 3 if there is significant csf pleocytosis with low csf glucose and associated systemic features the duration of therapy should be at least of 14 days in cases with repeat isolation of gram negative organism from cs of cultures the treatment should be extended 10 to 14 days from the last positive culture so the positive culture will be the culture should be done every 72 hours uh in these cases if a new vp shunt reimplant is planned it should be delayed for 10 days at least duration of 10 days from since the last culture being negative so is there any role of intraventricular administration of antibiotics apart from giving systemic antibiotics so usf usfda has not approved any intraventricular antibiotic use due to insufficient evidence but neurosurgery working party of the british society of antimicrobial chemotherapy recommends to consider in neurosurgical patients with post op meningitis an inadequate clinical improvement with systemic iv antibiotics we can uh, still intraventricular antibiotics as a role due to the risk of neurotoxicity particularly seizure penicillin and cephalosporin should not be given intrathecally 
Similarly, intraventricular antimicrobial agents are not recommended in infants based on the literature review uh, in a Cochrane. These are the literature review which we have gone through. Uh, intraventricular administration of polymyxin, cholestin, uh, cholestin, methyl sodium, and gentamicin have been elaborated. The dose of gentamicin is 4 to 8 mg in adults and 1 to 2 mg in children. The dose of gentamicin and the dose frequency depends upon the drain output uh, over 24 hours. If the output is less than 50 ml per 24 hours, the, the frequency would be every third day. If the output is 50 to 100 ml, the frequency would be every second day. And if it is 100 to 150 ml, and it would be once a day, once daily regimen. So what is the prognosis and outcome? So gram-negative ventricular uh, VP shunt infections historically are reported to be associated with significant mortality and poor outcomes. The mortality varied with the etiological agent also. Uh, e. coli VP shunt meningitis was reported to have less mortality, less mortality than other gram-negatives as per the literature review. Uh, two studies which we have uh, looked for, one uh, Unakand et al. and uh, uh, based on and uh, ceftriaxone. Uh, the ceftriaxone, which we are starting empirically for acute meningitis, is not inferior to other drugs uh, because the peak CSF concentration of ceftriaxone has been noted to be 100-fold greater than the minimum inhibitory concentration of gram-positive organism. Hence, it has been shown uh, to result in rapid eradication of bacteria from CSF as compared to aminoglycosides, which fail to obtain a consistent CSF concentration. Therefore, septraxone has been shown to achieve rapid sterilization of CSF based on the study of rate of bacteriological response to antimicrobial therapy in neonatal meningitis by G.H. McLean and et al. So, uh, take home points uh, if we are encountering patients with VP shunt infection, how to proceed further and uh, management. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Your uh, blood culture group, which organism, Tony? Uh, enterococcus species. Yeah. Yeah, and the Only CSF culture group? CSF has grown E. coli and enterococcus species. Sure. Blood culture. Culture tip, sorry. Ah, that because otherwise it's a bacteremic individual who has got a VP shunt. It's a uh, little odd from an abdominal source of a VP shunt infection. Uh, where was the tip? Did you see? Did you image? That, yeah, ma'am, we had the tip. Tip was within the peritoneum or they tip. just exteriorized the no, tip? No, ma'am, tip was within the peritoneum and they have exteriorized. And uh, while removing the tip, it was foul smelling and uh, it was a white color tube. When they removed, it was kind of fully uh, yellowish kind of thing with full and Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I have the difficult job of choosing this. And uh, for the uh, presentation, the way the case was presented and the attempt to explain all findings in the case, I'm giving it to the dish.